I have a woefully undersubscribed subreddit. So please do me a favor, if you're a Redditor, head on over to r slash postmortem studios and talk about anything related to any of my shenanigans. Peace. Brothers, sisters, listen to me. Dungeons and Dragons was never that good a game in the first place. It was just the first tabletop RPG, not the best tabletop RPG. And it still isn't. It is because D&D is so fundamentally unsatisfying that we have homebrew, that no two tables played the same way, that within a couple of years there were already 10 plus new games out there. If D&D wasn't a bit shit, we wouldn't have the OSR. The people were astonished at his doctrine. Hello lovelies. There is more to the old school than Dungeons and Dragons than trying to replicate Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I, I understand, I recognise that I'm something of an oddity in that I didn't start with D&D. I started with fighting fantasy, game books, and Merp. Yeah, that wasn't... Starting, starting with the derivation of Rollmaster wasn't the best way to go, <laughs> perhaps. But I got through it and became a game designer. So, so there you go. And I recognise that a lot of people did start with Dungeons & Dragons, and so they have a lot of nostalgic attachment to it. But there is, there is more uh, in this world. There is, there is more in vintage games. There is more in retro clones. There's more in the idea of retro cloning than just endless derivations of D&D. &D. I've weirdly got this reputation as being an old school renaissance guy when I haven't published much that has anything to do <laughs> with the OSR save machinations of the space princess. Um, I can't say I understand it. I don't understand a lot of how my various reputations work. You fuck one chimp. Um, but somehow I have. So I will I will I will comment on the topic. I think what started out as a very interesting attempt to kind of do a a living archaeology of the past of gaming has become somewhat staid of late. There is a lot of creativity in the OSR, and I would still say that it's probably more creative, more experimental, uh, I won't say the word better, but uh, than a lot of other developments in the RPG scene, which seems to have become stuck in this rut of politicised, wishy-washy, airy-fairy sort, sort of games. Now, looking back over the history of games, there, yeah, D and D starts it, but then it explodes. Right, and even if we just limit ourselves to the games that would qualify as vintage, which is normally taken as about forty years old or whatever, we've got a ton of games that reflect that D and D fundamentally wasn't particularly satisfying and wasn't a particularly good system, and we can excavate different motivations amongst game designers of the time as well. There were a lot more genres. Now there's going to be exceptions to everything that I mention here, but there's a lot of these old games that are worth going back to besides D&D as reactions and developments from D&D that it's worth looking at. And I think it's worth expanding the definition of OSR to take in all manner of retro clones. There's so many orphaned works out there. There's so many companies that wound up and went bust. There's so many systems that have things to teach us that were abandoned or never made it. There's so many setting ideas that are different. The application of role-playing rules to fundamentally and entirely different settings than we would necessarily even, even think of for them. But D&D was first and we owed a lot for that. We owe Gygax a lot for that and Arneson and all the others. But there is more out there. There's going to be exceptions. Um, you can spend forever tearing me apart in the comments saying, what about this game? But I'm talking about like public consciousness and designer consciousness and so on of these ideas. Boot Hill, a straight up Western RPG. Westerns fell out of fashion. 
there's been a few attempts to bring it back, usually mixing it with a bunch of other stuff. There aren't that many attempts to approach the Western genre as a, a straight up, you know, historical RPG. Historical RPGs are a thing that has kind of disappeared as well. Uh, there was On Guard, which was all courtly intrigue and romance. It was very popular here in the UK and had a fan base well into the 90s, but then seems to have kind of disappeared. I think I heard about a new edition not so long ago, but didn't hear anything past that. Tunnels and Trolls deserves a lot more recognition um, than it has had, and has even more abstracted rules than D&D, so that's heading in one sort of direction. There were a lot of zine games and things passed around only at conventions that we've largely missed. You know, very cheap printing stuff. Starfaring was possibly the first science fiction RPG. Nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about, <laughs> probably. Um, Chivalry and Sorcery was created as a reaction to D&D and a frustration at the lack of realism. That was a big thread in, in 80s games. We want our gaming to be more realistic. We want our immersion to come through these things making sense. That's not a thing that you see anymore, that, that, that attempt to achieve realism or at least plausibility in gaming. Uh, it's, it's all very, very narrative focused, very, very wishy-washy. There, there's no impetus to try and grasp realism as an alternative method of getting into that sense of immersion where the world makes sense and it doesn't buck against your expectations of reality. There were old license properties that have been forgotten. Flash Gordon and the Warriors of Mongo, which in the opposite track to the, to the realism, the characters were only defined in extremely general terms in that. Traveller hasn't exactly been retro-cloned. There are open versions of the Traveller system not that the Traveller system didn't have its own issues over time, but there doesn't really seem to have been an attempt to create a new or updated version of the idea of Traveller, a spiritual successor to it, if you will. Traveller wears its 1970s and 80s science fiction trappings on its sleeve, but technology has advanced, physics has advanced, ideas in science fiction have advanced and we don't really have hard science fiction games anymore. Again, there will be exceptions to these, but it, it's not a big thread that you're going to see. Bushido had a very focused sort of idea of a game, a very limited idea of what the game was, but then prosecuted that to, to its fullest extent. There was an RPG, barely, based on Dallas. You don't see games based on soap operas. You know, I'm tempted to do a game based on something that I don't like, like football, for example, um, to, to make something out of that, just as a sort of design curiosity to see whether that would work or whether it would reach out to new audiences. There's a lot of post-apocalyptic games that seem to have been lost to more whimsical sides of things, things like The Morrow Project or Aftermath had that thread of realism going through them. Well, I guess a realistic post-apocalypse, you're dead, so there's not so much play appeal there. Palladium system is awful, but they have a lot of good ideas that you could do spin-offs from. There was Alma Mater, which was a school-based game. Maybe that's a bit too difficult to do these days with people's sensitivities about, you know, well, you can imagine. Merp has been kind of retro-cloned, but not really. There, there, there are things about Rollmaster that aren't awful. Gangbusters, there haven't been a lot of crime-based RPGs. Recon, there haven't been a lot of military-based RPGs. I think that kind of goes against the zeitgeist at the moment, but it might be interesting to see a, a realistic tactical approach in role-playing rather than in war games. And the new Twilight 2000 has its strengths, but it's not that. Victorian Adventure, a very obscure game, tried to replicate Sherlock Holmesian sort of sort of detection in a way that would later be 
better done in Gumshoe. But a lot of these old games are trying to tackle the same problems that we're looking at today, uh, that we've been looking at over the whole course of RPGs. And a lot of them are obscure, a lot of them are lost, but a lot of them have something to teach us. And so my, my appeal to you would be, let's, let's expand the definition of OSR. Let's, let's go back and examine and look at these older games, see what we can learn from them, see how they've tackled the same issues, ask ourselves questions like, is realism another approach to emotion? And can we balance realism with more simple systems like BRP manages to do, for example, I, I would say. It's, it's worth a thought and it's worth the effort to expand beyond the boundaries that we've given ourselves. Certainly the the boundaries that D&D players seem to have given themselves in defining the OSR so very, very tightly. Zhang. The Shadow World is an homage to 90s goth culture, goth punk games, and the interminable pettiness of the LARP scene. Bloodsucker, Chad, and Wizkid thrust you into a world of teen drama, occult shenanigans, and comedically weak supernatural powers. You know it's good, because RPG Netic used it of classism. Available at post-morp.com, lulu.com, and drive-thru RPG.